Thanks for making the time, Kiki. I know you've been. Um, uh, I know you, it's it's been pretty hectic since since you got over. So, uh, it, you know, it's been. When did you first sign? Was it like August time you first signed with the team? Or mm, yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you've been doing domestic games, but you've been doing uh, European games as well. So it's been non-stop for you guys. How, how are you how are you settling into to UK life? Um, I'm settling in pretty good. Yeah. You know, I like it here. Yeah. Nice city. Yeah. Um, great people to be around. So, I mean, I love it here. Cool. Cool. Okay. So, um, the reason I, I was hoping to speak to you uh, in a bit more detail is because I spoke to Costa Kufos um, a, f a few weeks ago. And there's been a lot of articles around the London Lions about their business side of things. Um, and, you know, about how, the, how they're hoping to, you know, grow uh, basketball in, in the UK, which is obviously great news. Um, but I wanted to sort of get some insight from the players' perspective as well. Well, w what all of that is looking like on the court for you guys, um, for, you know, especially people who have played in the NBA and yourself in the WNBA. Um, yeah, so I wanted to p pick your brain a little bit because you've come from, you know, a very prestigious uh, college program before before you, you turned pro. Um, you know, you've got uh, you've got Don Staley in in your corner. What what was it like playing for su for such a storied college? Um, you know, and how did that sort of prepare you for professional life? Um, I had an amazing four years at South Carolina. Um, I felt like that really prepared me. You know, especially on the court, being coached by somebody like that, um, who's able to, you know, break down the game in a lot of ways that a lot of people can't. If that makes sense. So I mean, it was great. Um, learned a lot on and off the court from her. So uh always take that with me, uh, you know, throughout being a pro now. Yeah, yeah. And you became yeah, well, I mean, you became like one of the best shot blockers in, in college history. You know, you well you performed incredibly in, in the SEC, but like um where did your defensive uh you, you know um energy come from was it was it when you were at south carolina or was it um has that been something you've had in you the whole time i feel like that's something i've had in me the whole time because um since i can remember i always love blocking shots and i mean that's what gives me the most energy rather than scoring or anything else i mean that's what you know gets me hyped the most so i feel like i always had that uh defensive mindset cool cool at college you were uh, you, you know, you're very fortunate, but not just fortunate, you know, you you, you definitely won it, but you got yourselves to NCAA championship. Um, so you know what makes, you know, what makes a championship in, in environment? What What is it? Um, you, you know, whether it was, whether it was with, with Dawn, whether it was partly because of Asia, whether it was because of yourself leading that team, what what creates a championship team in in your mind? I mean, I feel like it definitely starts with like, good character people definitely starts there and I mean just playing together and playing for each other and I mean just taking it game by game you can't look ahead or look past anybody because I mean anybody can be beat, beaten on any given night you know so just having a mindset to uh you know game by game play by play and I mean just grind it out it's a grind I know towards the end when you have uh you know your body is tired and that different type of stuff it's just all about grinding it out honestly yeah yeah and and you know obviously that's going to be the same on a on a professional level you know ma magnified you know but you've you have witnessed you know some of the all-time greats you know when you spent some time in uh in the WNBA obviously was it a full year with with Minnesota you know you, you were with yeah. Sylvia Fowles um and then over in Seattle with Sue Bird what did you learn from those players and, uh, uh, you know, after you were playing with s someone, you know, with the talent of like Asia um, in, in college? Yeah. I mean, I've learned a lot, um, especially like from a leadership role from all of them, all three of them that you just named, Asia, uh, Sylvia and Sue. Um, just how they approach the game, uh, different stuff like that. Uh, what what is it that they were doing differently you reckon what is it that you recognize when you are on the floor with them or in training or whatever just overall like just getting ready for practice and everything like they approach it the same every day um you know like they all like have routines that they do every day to get themselves you know set for practice or game or whatever it may be so it's just little stuff like that 
I would say. Yeah, yeah. And how much of that then did you pick up and uh, take away with you? And and how much of you, uh, how much of that are you bringing to the London Lions now that you've come over here? Um, a good. I mean, I, I feel like a good amount of it. Uh, just trying to lead that team to you know win a Euro Cup championship. Uh, also the you know WB, WBBL championship. Um, I mean, just try to go out there and give it all I got every night and try to encourage, you know, my teammates and be there for them when they're on the floor. Because um, it was a, because obviously the Lions were a pretty successful team last year as well. Yeah. Um, they lost Joey Leadham Warner uh, to retirement, but you've stepped into the void. There are still some leaders on this team. You know, you got uh, you got Z, um, you got Holly, who were there um, last season, but um so did did you come in thinking that you need to be a leader because you've had that top level experience or was this a, a kind of feeling out process for you the past few months? I mean, yes, but at the same time, um, you know, I'm not uh I am vocal when I need to be, but I'm not super, super uh what is it like super, super vocal. So I mean, for in terms of like uh like our captain, Shanice, uh Z. Yeah. You know, they they do a lot of the talking and that different type of stuff. I'm more take a seat back on that. But I mean, you know, when I do need to step up and talk and say something, I do. If that makes sense. Yeah. So what yeah. was it then that, that like attract? You know, because you were first round pick in the WNBA. Um, you know, I, I think you played pretty well in those in those first couple of seasons. Obviously, took uh, took some time out to uh, you know become a mother. Uh, congratulations, by the way. And I know I'm a year a year or so off from uh, <laughs> telling you that, but you know, that's a huge achievement in itself. So. Um, you know why? Why did you, you you possibly could have worked your way back up into the WNBA systems? What was it that attracted you to come to the UK? To, to you know, arguably at the moment, the WBBL is one of the lesser known leagues in in the you know it's only been around less than ten years. So what what is it that made you decide to come over to the WBBL? Um, you know, obviously having like roots here, uh, being having a British passport. This is actually my first time coming to the UK so um but yeah I mean it just attracted me because I mean the team had you know quite good success last year and I felt like uh you know adding me to that and then the cu other couple pieces I will have like a, a very good chance to compete in the Euro Cup and win uh yeah I mean that's pretty much it yeah um, well so c comparing WBBL to, uh, I'm not going to ask you to compare WBBL to WNBA because I think that's quite a leap at the moment, you know, yeah. but um, but WBBL to say Euro Cup, you know, what's the what's the different mindsets when you go into each one of those competitions? Because Euro Cup is, is arguably a step up, um, you know, but you are facing some teams where, you know, it's quite a challenge, some, you know, Euro League level teams. And then there's some teams that are, you know, sort of similar to WBBL. So what's the, what's the mentality going over um, or welcoming teams from Europe in, into into uh, the UK? Yeah, um, I feel like, honestly, when you play like games at different different levels like that, it's kind of tough as a player mm -hmm. to approach, you know, to approach those games the same, if that makes sense. But yeah. um, I feel like we've done a pretty good job. Uh, especially these past, you know, couple of games approaching it, uh, you know, as if we're playing the best team in the world, just to say, uh, doing a better job of approaching it like that because it's kind of tough, you know, going from a team that you could, you know, that you know you could blow out by 30 and then going to play a team where it's head-to-head, -head, play by play, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it's pretty tough, but I feel like we've done a pretty, jo a pretty good job adjusting to that. Yeah, I I mean I I'd say so. I think I think your success in in Euro Cup so far speaks for itself. You know, it's the, last season um I think we were you know, everyone in the UK was was surprised when not not surprised that's it but was super excited when uh when you know the London Lions took some took some wins in European competition this year it's sort of expected so it's a bit of a different mentality and th are you are you feeling that from from Mark and from the from the organization oh uh, yes definitely yeah yeah <laughs> and uh so as I said I, I spoke to I spoke to Costa a few weeks ago um you know he's I don't want to be rude to Costa. He's he's probably in the second half of his career. I would I would say you know he's he's in his thirties now. Um, 
you know, he's still playing great, but, uh, you, you know, de- you can see uh, he spoke about sort of joining the London Lions and, you know, recognising that it's a fledgling uh, environment for for players. Okay. Um, how how about yourself? You know, you're still young. You're still you've still got a good long career ahead of you. What what's the drive for you with the London Lions? And I guess long term, are you <laughs> hey little man, are you are you hoping to get uh you know to to get back into that sort of WNBA level um in in the next few years? Um yes, I mean for sure, it's still in the works. I mean honestly, these past two years it's been you know kind of tough. I had you know had a baby the following year um. Well, then just I personally didn't feel like my body, like I was ready to go back out there and play. So I mean, like this, I was coming at the perfect timing with the overseas season. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, yes, that's kind of how it worked out for me the past couple, the past two years. But I feel like I'll definitely be back in the WNBA. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and yeah, I guess that's the benefit is that you know, look, obviously for the men's NBA players, you know, they get. The, their their season coincides uh, with uh, European competition. Obviously, with the women's side of things, you know, you you probably it's, can do both. It's, yeah, yeah. It's it's you know it's it's a grind on your body, but it seems like it's it's a grind you're up for. So that that's that's something that you're definitely looking forward to in the future, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And you know, this is your first full season back uh you know since since becoming a mother how how are you how are you coping with that are you are you doing okay like it must be quite uh, quite mentally tough um yes i feel pretty good um for me it's just you know coming home going to practice coming home seeing the smile on his face every day um uh, that's amazing for me so um it is tough but it's amazing at the same time yeah yeah absolutely cool 